Now that the retaining wall is finished, it's time to begin on the workshop itself. In this video, I'm going to be marking out the footprint of the building, setting rebar with string to help locate the corners and all of the other footers within this building. So let's get started. My first corner, I've come out three feet from the house. Now I wanted to have more room than this, but I didn't dig enough back of my hill, so this is how close it has to be. So I've got this piece of rebar here. I'm going to set that just for now, and I'll come back and move it here in just a bit. My second corner here is also three feet away from the house. There. And it's also 20 feet from the other stake in this direction. Next I'm measuring from the first stake out 14 feet to the next place here. So I've got this stake right here. For the last stake I'm going to measure out 20 feet this direction and then I'm going to take the next stake and measure out a 14 foot and that should give us the rough area of where we should be and then we're going to find the diagonal to get the actual value here now going diagonally from corner to corner i should have 24 foot and 5 inches which is what we got right there so that means we are squared off all four corners are exactly where we want them. The problem is this needs to be dug out and it's really hard to um, dig immediately or directly against this. So what I'm going to do now is come out one foot past each corner in both directions so that a string line can be run from this. So I'm going to mark this right here at 21 and lay, make sure this line is nice and straight, just touching both of those, and then so that one's going to be a bit more permanent. I'll be removing this one in just a second. Now I'm going to pull from the other direction here and go to this 15 foot mark right here and tap that one in like that. Now we can run strings from here and here and when they cross over it'll be at this corner right here. I did want to mention that I used a level here to get the uh, rebar straight up and down. Now I've got a line level here that I'm going to clip around this line and then I'm going to try to find the spot where all of the string around the building is level because we'll be using that uh, later on. Looks like right about there. What's the chance of these dogs running into this line and messing it up? What's that? Across the line, you can swing it a lot harder. My dad came over yesterday evening and asked if he could help, and of course, I did not turn down the free help. So, very uh, thankful that he was able to come over and do some work. So, let me show you what we got accomplished, and then uh, we'll get on with the rest of this build. First off, I removed that third leg that was in the rebar here, and we attached all the string around the entire perimeter and uh, as you can see 
they don't all touch in here. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. So there's actually a little gap in there. Um, so what we're doing is we're basing um, everything off of this top string on this side. And um, we dug holes where the blocks will be. And then we set that uh, concrete in there. And we measured from uh, this string down so that every one of these, um, hopefully, will be very close to the same height uh, based off of this level string on the front here. And then uh, we, we got six of them done. And uh, I went and put this block over here just to kind of see what it would look like. Um, but that will be um, how the blocks will set on there. So the next thing I need to do is um, go ahead and dig these last six here and get those level. And then we'll be able to um, start building up from there. So I am certainly no professional here. Um, and I just did what seemed to make sense to me. The corner over here between this point and this first stake is six foot six inches. Seven foot between the two middle ones. And then again, six foot six inches over here to equal the 20 foot. And then um, on the front side, from this corner to here is seven foot, and then seven foot to there. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, nothing is over seven foot in a span. So I should be able to get uh, two by sixes to cover this just fine. With my dad being here and uh, wanting to get things done, I kind of got into work mode and did not film anything, but I was able to get all 12 of the footers poured with the concrete. And uh, my neighbor, or my uh, parents' neighbor that I've been helping, uh, she gave me all of these uh, capstones here, 12 of them. So we'll be using those today. I figured what we would do, oh, and um, my neighbor here uh, gave me these six by eights to use. They're a little bit short, but I think we can make them work. So they were free, so uh, definitely wanted to use them. So what I want to do first is put the blocks on top of the footers and get the, uh, the wood on here so we can start building up this workshop. I still have the strings laid out to indicate the corners of the workshop. And I'm gonna be using those to get the blocks in the right position. Now I could probably just get by with one block in the capstone, but I kind of want to have some airflow in here underneath the building. So I'm going to use two blocks high and then the capstone. And that should give a bit of airflow up underneath here. And with these strings, I can move the blocks about to make sure they are um, in the appropriate position. Looks like that's pretty good on this one. Right on the corner. Yeah, nice. And I'll put this capstone on here. Not entirely sure what they're called, but capstone seems to be appropriate enough. And that should make a nice level surface to uh, put these six by eights on. A little bit off because of the uh, concrete that's on top of the blocks, but that will correct itself when there's a bunch of weight on there. I have all four corners set up. So now I'm gonna start working on the inside. And um, the corners are the main ones that have to have the guide. So the ones that go from one side to the other, I'm going to hopefully pull out these stakes and get that line off of there. That way I can use the outside line as a guide still, but now I can put more blocks on top here. So for instance, uh, it'd be off here if I use the bottom block where it is. So I'm going to scoot it over and line the top one up. 
to the right spot. Okay, and I just want this to be touching the line, but not moving it. Okay, put this cap on here. It would be ideal if this six by eight was about uh, six inches longer. So six foot, six inches, but it's not, but it was free. So my plan is to, of course, put it on the end of the corner and let it rest on the other block. And then I'm gonna use my six by sixes that I already had in the front of the house as the um, other piece that goes between the middle. And I'll use some two by sixes to secure that into place. That's the hope here. So we'll see how well this spans the gap. I figure with a six by eight, even if it's only on the block, like three inches, it is uh, gonna be pretty stout. So, if this doesn't work, we'll just deal with it. That's just too close for comfort. It's maybe an inch and a half. I just fear that if that ever came off of here, it would be a disaster. You'd probably break some stuff and you'd have to have a, a lift to get it back up there. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and scoot this in six inches so that it's on there appropriately. And then on the other end where we uh, won't have the wood all the way to the corner, I will just cut a block of six by six to put on there and just uh, use the two by six as well to anchor it into uh, place. So that's what we got there. So it's gonna be roughly half and half on that one. I'm here in the front of the house to cut this six by six that's been holding my gravel back. I hope that I can cut this on all four sides and then use a saw here in the middle to uh, get this completed. So hopefully we'll be able to get through this. I'm cutting this one at 82 and a quarter inches. Okay, so what I'm hoping is I can flip this over and just keep going along here until I get through. here. One more ought to do it. Okay, how close are we? Let me get another saw real quick. Going manual now. Old fashioned way. Yeah, about an inch by an inch square in there. Had to cut through. These sure are heavy. I'm gonna set this one up here and get it positioned between these other two. Hopefully that will be more than enough security. just a hair big so let me scoot one of these out just a hair that ought to do it okay I'm gonna get this right on the inside edge so that I can use a piece of six by uh, two by six to go on the outside to make sure these are securely fastened together. 
Before I go locking this into place, I wanted to check to see how level I was. And it seems like this corner and this corner are the same height, but the middle two drop down a little bit. Because when I zoom in here to this, okay, this span right here is dead on level um, from this 10 foot or 12 foot, what was that? Yeah, 12 foot section there. Um, so I need to somehow shim up these middle blocks by, it looks like, close to three quarters of an inch down there. I started looking at all the rest of the blocks and realized that these two are higher than the rest of them. And actually by about an inch and a half. So I must have used the wrong guideline whenever I measured these. So everything else is uh, closer to the same. The problem is these are taller and uh, they are level which means I'm going to have to shim the rest of the blocks to bring them up to this height. So first of all, I'm going to get some strings leveled out here uh, in both directions and bring the rest of them up to that level. So let's get started. You'll notice I have the strings tied to this post here and then I'm going to come down here and I've got some uh, fence posts that are in the ground here. And I'm going to use this with a line level to hopefully get this up to the height that it needs to be. So I'm going to use this line level here. Let's see. Yeah, right there. So everything else has to come up to that level right there. I'm going to try using a 2x4 to get this up to the level it needs to be. And we'll go from there. Of course, whenever it's done, I'm going to have them uh, spaced appropriately on the block here. The 2x4 was exactly what was required to get that string to just barely touch there, and it is level. So, I'm going to move on to the next one and keep uh, doing this until I get to the end. And then over here, I'm also going to uh, run the string from here all the way down that pole um, to make sure that it's level in both directions. Because I got these free 6x8s, uh, I was having... Because my free 6x8s don't come to the very end, I'm going to cut an extra little block here to fill this gap. And I need, looks like, 8 inches on this one. So let's go cut that one real quick and get it installed here. Measure out 8 inches. I'm going to put my speed square in here. Okay. I'm going to be using the miter saw here to cut uh, 12 one foot long uh, pieces of 2x6 and that's going to be used to anchor down those uh, 6x6 and 8x6 together, um, those skid plates. So I'm going to cut here. Okay. I'm going to take this block here and set it right here on the edge. Make sure it's lined up nice and proper. Okay, then I'm going to take one of the uh, foot-long 2x6s here. Now, the friend that I've been helping to move gave me this impact driver. It's an older one, but it's uh, really awesome. I never used one until now, and uh, they do pack quite a punch. So, I'm going to make this job a little bit quicker than using traditional drill. So, I'm just lining this up half and half and then putting the screws in here. I like this thing. It makes short work of going through some really tough wood. Nice. I'm just putting four screws in each piece here. Each of these skids now has 
a block on it to hold it in place. And there are uh, some places like this one where there's about a quarter of an inch that's off, but that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it with the way these blocks are poured. Now what I'm going to do is come back and do some backfill around these blocks and this part will be complete. Well, I just finished up the foundation of the workshop. Let's take a look at what all has been done. These two blocks were the highest of all of them. And so that was the basis for um, putting in the shims, which allow dogs over here. So I ran that level line over to that pole and got all of those lined up straight and then put these blocks in here to uh, tie everything together. And like I said before, there are a couple of spots, I think that's the worst one right there, where there's uh, about a fourth of an inch difference in the height. So the building won't be perfect, but for the way I work, it's pretty good. I'm glad to have this step done. Looking forward to the next step, which will be building the frame of the floor. So definitely tune in for that episode. and. Uh, Surprisingly, it has not rained in the past 26 days, so I got the wall done and the foundation done, but I think today is going to be the day. There is quite a storm building up behind me here. I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Bye.